Hello friends and welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 2nd. Boy, July. It's a beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Sunny, uh, 72 degrees. A little later than I normally make these videos. Uh, been doing some stuff in the yard and uh, got to do some more stuff in the yard today. So, all good. All very, very good. Happy Independence Day. Happy Fourth of July to all you folks here in the U.S. To uh, my buddies up in Canada. Happy Canada Day which is today or tomorrow, I don't remember which, or maybe it was yesterday. No, it wasn't yesterday. Anyway, happy Canada Day. Um, hope you're all having a great weekend, enjoying the holiday, doing all the things that uh, that folks like to do on these kinds of days. Uh, yeah, I was thinking about this video. I don't have a pipe yet, Ben. I'll get to that in a minute. I will have one. Uh, but I was thinking about this video, and I was going to talk about, you know, what the 4th of July is all about, and I've done this in the past, you know, the, the, the history and everything, and, and I, I think we've had enough kind of doom and gloom, so I'm just going to focus on what's good and decent about the world, about about our, our fun country, and uh, maybe we'll talk a bit, little bit about the good and the decent, but uh, beyond that, I have no idea what I'm going to be talking about, so this should be interesting. <laughs> What I would like to enjoy today in my pipe is uh, some of this Esoterica Dorchester that was given to me by my buddy Jim Finn, and I really appreciate this. A little bit of a story behind this. He gave this to me some time back uh, with a bunch of other stuff, and I got it mixed in with a bunch of other stuff, and I was doing a little bit of cleanup. I talked about this on the Friday live stream if you want more information. Because uh, it's a bit embarrassing, I found a bunch of tobacco, and amongst it was this and many, many other little bags of, of tobacco. So I started a new thing on the Friday Night Live streams. We'll see how this goes. In order to help me get through this stuff, I'm going to be randomly picking some pouches or bags, baggies, packs like this, whatever. Um, and we're going to let you guys decide which one I open. And I'm going to smoke it for the week you know I'll have a haunted bookshop as well don't worry but uh, this is gonna be something that I go through during the week I'll talk about it on the Sunday show and uh, yeah we'll see how this goes we'll do it for a while once I get through all the baggies I got plenty of tins so unfortunately there's some lot of Kia in there but. and the Dorchester it was vacuum packed so I gotta fluff it up a bit and I got this beautiful little tobacco tray that was given to me by my my body my body by my buddy Donnie <laughs> uh, Hillbilly Piper uh, at the Columbus show last year and I, I love this look at the gray on that just absolutely beautiful uh, he picked it up on some island trip that he was on uh, was handmade by a local and he he purchased a few of them and was, was giving them out to folks at the, the pipe show so very kind of Donnie so I'm just transferring this because it was vacuum packed I gotta fluff it up a bit and yeah, you can see you get these kind of chunks that, you know, it's basically a press of sorts. I haven't been using this little bowl because I, I don't really dry tobacco for the most part. I, I kind of like it the way it comes, you know. I, I don't really need to do much of that. And flakes, I just kind of rub up and put in the pipe, so, yeah. But uh, it's, it's very beautiful, and it's kind of become a rest on my desk for yesterday's pipe or whatever. Um... A tamper or something like that and it got kind of dusty and all that so I couldn't use it on Friday but I've cleaned it up and I'm going to be using it all right so we got the tobacco there you can see that's beautiful stuff and I'm going to load this in my Briar Spirit Janus lovely pipe by my dear friend Kirk Fitzgerald I miss you Kirk I hope you're well and we'll be lighting it up soon so Dorchester is an interesting blend. I, I haven't looked it up, uh, which I should have done, but I haven't. Um, it is, according to Kim's description, it is a vapor, so Virginia Perique. Uh, but it's got a very, very nice apricot topping on it, which uh, surprised me. Oh, that's kind of nice. It just kind of tips right back into the bag. So probably have about 
two bowls of this left and normally I would say I'll smoke one and donate this, the last one to the uh, 2023 jar but this is so good I might not do that so yeah apricot topic so it's technically I guess an aromatic But it's in that category that I like to think of as natural aromatics, where the flavor doesn't go away on the first couple of puffs. It stays with you throughout the, the bowl, and it's not chemical at all. It just really tastes like apricot. The Virginias in this blend are a little bit tangy. Not uh, not terrible, but they're a bit more on the citrusy tart side of things than, than I normally like. But it's really nicely balanced by that apricot. And the perique is interesting because I don't taste it much on my tongue. But the retrohale is surprisingly spicy. Again, that topping might be... Uh, Might be having an effect there, but hmm, it is good stuff. Um, thanks, Tony. Uh, it's good to have friends, isn't it? So yeah, I was thinking about Fourth of July, Independence Day, and like so many things, it's a it's a long weekend with a barbecue attached and. That's fine because I think it was actually, I think it was John Adams that said that the, the independence of the country should be, should be celebrated with uh, bonfires and firework displays or something like that. Yeah. It's a big deal, you know, it's a really big deal. And it's easy to look around today and say, well, it was a big deal, but we're in decline. We're going against Franklin's advice and giving up liberties for a sense of security. Um, we're, we're pointing at one another saying, you can't do that. You have to do this. And uh, if you do that, it hurts them. And therefore, you're not allowed to do that or you know, they, well, yeah, there's a lot of shenanigans going on. And on top of that, we've got incredible corruption, the likes of which I don't think we've ever seen, or at least we haven't been aware of. And the really sad thing is it's now extended to the press, so we don't even have the ability to I know what's true anymore. But yet there's still a lot that is good and decent in this country and in many countries throughout the world. Now I know people that are down, you know, down and out. I know people that are suffering. I know people that are s suffering alongside of loved ones that are suffering. There's a lot of bad out there, you know, an awful lot of bad. It seems like I, maybe it's just something different in our culture that now we talk about these things more, but the number of people that I know that have been diagnosed with severe, uh, you know, significant medical issues in the past year or two is, is unbelievable. Um, and maybe it's just that we're more sensitive to it, more open to it, I don't know. But it just seems to have ramped up.
but I take heart in the fact that people are more compassionate about those things in a lot of ways, personally compassionate. And that's important. You know, it's not... It's one thing to see a problem and to say, oh, we have to do something about that. It's another to see a problem and recognize that I have to do something about that. And that's the hard part for a lot of folks. You know, a lot of folks think that there's this society responsibility that they can impose on everyone without taking the first step themselves. But more and more I see people taking that first step. And that's a good thing. And it inspires me. I try to do the same. People are good. You know, at the very heart of it, people are good. Now, sure, there's some bad actors out there. That's always going to happen. Because people are also human. Humans are fallible. But there's an awful lot of good in the world. There's an awful lot of people that care for their brothers and sisters that are willing to take steps to, to help out somebody that's down or to comfort somebody that's suffering. To pray for those in need. And when we see that, it enheartens us and inspires us to, to do the same. And we're very lucky to live in this time. To live in this time when we can learn about those things from a distance. You know, where you know, if you, if you had a friend, you know, let's just say 20 years ago. I think that's probably accurate. Yeah. Let's 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 say 30 years ago. You had a friend that lived in another country. Let's say you had a friend over in Germany. Just picking on Germany for no good reason. And they got sick, or their mom got sick, or they lost their job, or, or whatever. You might never know about that. You might find out about it years after the fact. Maybe you'd get a letter, and there'd be really nothing you could do about it. And now we live in a world that has gotten smaller, and, and that's not always a good thing, but it's brought us closer together, and it's allowed us more ability to be compassionate to one another, more opportunity is the word I was looking for. And we've taken advantage of that. You know, we're, we're, we're better for it. What else is good? We still live in one of the freest countries in the world, despite attempts to tear that down. It's still true. We still have the opportunity for fair and open elections, which allows us to control those that govern us. And we still, as long as we're willing to put up with the backlash, we still have the opportunity to speak our minds, to say really whatever we want. As long as it doesn't harm others. The old yelling fire in the movie theater uh, reference, where you know, that's not considered free speech because it's harmful.
slander, libel, those kind of things. You know. Always bad actors, like I said earlier, but for the most part, we take advantage of that opportunity to speak our minds, and we do it in a in a reasonable fashion. But let's also take the opportunity to listen. I think with the right to free speech comes the responsibility to listen. And, this is important, the responsibility to think. And I could list you 10, 20 stories that, you know, over the last week or two came along where I said, oh, my God, people are stupid. You know, they're just, and it's, it's usually this nonsense. Like I, I saw one the other day that um, this, this incredible hack will help you get, I'm not making this up, will help you get bird poop off your car. And I read it because my wife is constantly worried about birds pooping on her car. She's, it seems to be a target for them. And she thinks it's going to, and it is not good for the car finish, you know, it's going to eat away the paint. So she, she worries about this a lot. So I saw this and I thought, oh, maybe this is something I can send to her. I did send it to her, but not because I thought it would be helpful, but because it was ridiculous. The, 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 the hack to get bird poop off your car was you wet a paper towel, you put it on the bird poop, you wait a little bit and you wipe it off. So when you wet things and wipe them with a paper towel, they come off of surfaces. The funny thing about this is, this, according to the story at least, and I'll link to the story below if I, if I remember. According to the story, um, this was a, the subject of a TikTok video. It was somewhat controversial because there were people that didn't believe it. <laughs> so yes, there, there are lots and lots of stories like that. But in that same time period, There's usually one about somebody doing the right thing, understanding, uh, pointing out a fallacy. We're not done yet. We're not getting smarter on average, but there's hope. Hope's a good thing. Well, it's a very good thing. So when you're flipping your burgers on the grill this weekend and pondering the meaning of the day, the sacrifices that were made for the freedoms that we enjoy, and worrying about the freedoms that we seem to be losing. Keep in mind that we're still a republic of basically decent people and that there's always hope. can do something about it. No matter what the thing is that's in front of you that you say that's wrong, don't just say it's wrong. Do something about it. Well, I think I... I think I said something. I honestly didn't know where this was going to go. I hope... I hope I didn't embarrass myself, and I hope I entertained you at least. This Dorchester is, so I've always said I'm not going to chase esoterica blends, and I won't. Uh, I think it's ridiculous. I think it's a manufactured scarcity. And to date, none of the esoterica blends that I've had have really blown me away. Uh, they're good, you know, good quality tobacco. Uh, but I can find things that are just as good at Cornell and Deal. 
This, if this was freely available, I would probably buy this. As the bowl goes on, that tangy tartness is diminished and it's getting much more a depth of sweetness to it. Um, the perique is, the back of my throat and my nasal passages really know the perique's there. My tongue doesn't. And that apricot, you know, more than halfway through the bowl, that apricot is still hanging in there and just providing a really nice note to it. Oh yeah, if you get a chance, and it sounds like your thing, try yourself some Esoterica Dorchester. You probably won't get the chance. That's okay, Jim. And thank you, Jim, for giving me this chance. And again, Donnie, for the for the really beautiful tobacco tray. Sorry it's been almost a year since uh, I've been able to acknowledge that, but a wonderful thing. So what's on the docket for today? Well, I've got to do some gardening. Um, we've got arugula and lettuce that needs to come in. It's uh, done remarkably well. Got a lot of rain that I think has helped it out immensely, but it, yeah, it's got to come in. So I'm going to be harvesting arugula and lettuce. Nothing else is ready to harvest yet. But. And by lettuce, I mean what I think are called field greens. There's different types. Um, one's purple, one's frilly. I, I don't know. My wife picked them up. Make a good salad. And then I, I continue to work on this chest of drawers and might do some work on that this afternoon. Got the case essentially, the four walls essentially done now. I, I cut the dados in for the bottom yesterday and I'm real happy with that. Got to trim the bottom a little bit to square it up. I knew that. I cut it oversized. And uh, then it's just letting in the drawer rails. And at that point, the case will be finished, and then I get to start the joy of making drawers. And I gotta put it back on it, too. We're getting there. And it's been quite a lot of fun building this. More fun than it should be because it's taken time away from other stuff, but hey. Life's not about getting to the finish line, it's just about enjoying it as you, as you go. Or something like that. Well folks, with that, I think I'm going to let you go and get on with your 4th of July weekend, or your Canada Day weekend, or your... I don't have anything special planned this weekend. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to finish my uh, my Dorchester here and then go get some of that yard work done. So, you all take care, and until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.